We're going to begin this video looking at uh, transforming rational functions. Okay, so hopefully this will be a video maybe one of two, I'm not sure yet. Um, okay, so as we get started, we have this rational function and um, we know, um, I always tell my, my domain joke that Chuck Norris can divide by zero. Um, we know that when it comes to the domain that x cannot equal negative four. So if you write that in set notation, you could say x is the set, uh, there's, it's a set x such that x is not equal to negative four. Or you can tell me that the domain goes from negative infinity to negative four, and then you pick it up again and go from negative four to infinity. Um, so it's everything except negative four. Um, if we have, we've seen rational functions in the past, and um, we might know that if you have the same degree, top and bottom, you can divide the leading coefficients. But this activity here is going to kind of lead us through and show us why that's true. Um, so you might already know that the range, we have an asymptote. Um, by the way, this would have given us an asymptote. We have an asymptote at y equals, well, 2 over 1 is just 2. And so the range, you could either tell me it's a set y such that y is not equal to 2, or you could tell me it's negative infinity um, to 2. We pick it up again and go from 2 to infinity. Uh, okay, so that is a little unclear for us, perhaps, um, as to why that's true. But when we, when we do part b, it'll make a little more sense. So if I take this 2x minus 3 and I divide it um, and I divide it by x plus 4, I can do synthetic division, and that seems kind of a silly thing to do here, 2, negative 3, and I can put the negative 4 outside. Um, that gives me 2. Here's negative 8. Um, yes, okay, and that's negative 11. So when I, have, when I divide this, what I end up getting is this is equal to 2 um, plus, well, negative 11 over, what did we divide by? We divided by, oh, sorry, I'm all over the place. We divided by x plus 4. Well, we've almost got it in the form that they wanted. They wanted us to write it a over x minus h plus k. Um, here's the, the a. This is the, the h value comes from here, and there's the k. So if we rewrite this, we can say that our f of x is equal to negative 11x plus 4 plus 2. And so now, when we want to find the, trans the, the, the transformations, we, we know from our transformations that this has moved left four. Um, well, okay, so first we had a reflection over the x-axis. Then we had a vertical stretch um, of 11. And then we said we went left four and up two. So if we think about our parent function had um, an asymptote and an asymptote, um, and now we've gone, we've, we've, instead of being in quadrants one and in quadrant three, we've now reflected we're in quadrants four and two, um, and then we had a vertical stretch, so instead of one, one, we, that, that everything kind of gets pulled farther away. Then we went left four, so one, two, three, four, and then we went up two, one, two. And so this left to, so this tells us we had an asymptote at y equals two and x equals negative four, which we knew do, 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 from up here when we talked about our, our range and our and our domain. Um, so the dividing this out and rewriting it, it's a lot easier to see that we took this parent function, y equals one over x, and we did, excuse me, and we did those transformations. So hopefully you can see the connection between the equation written this way. Um, and how that was transformed. Okay, so the next part, I think I can do two in one video. The next part, they've given me the, the equation in a form um, that's really easy to see the transformations. So describe the transformations. Um, we reflect over the x-axis, vertical stretch, um, of three, we went right one, and up five. Okay, and so my domain and range, well, I used to have an asymptote at um, x equals zero. Well, now it's gonna be at x equals positive one. Um, I used to have an asymptote at y equals zero, so, but that's gone up five. 
Okay, and then they want me to write it in this form. Well, so what I need to do is get a common denominator here. So I have this negative 3 over x minus 1. I can always multiply by what I like to call a funky form of 1. And this gives me, okay, negative 3 plus 5 times x minus 1. Everybody has that denominator of x minus 1. This gives me 5x. Here's minus 5 minus 3, so minus 8 over x minus 1. And now that's, that, that's our f of x that we have written in that form.